This video covers the mechanics of instrumental variables. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine whether an independent variable is endogenous or exogenous and explain why, assess the validity of proposed instrumental variables, and use software to estimate an instrumental variable's regression and interpret the results. Recall that we use instrumental variables when we have attempted to estimate an ordinary least squares OLS uh, model where y depends on x, but we have uh, a concern that x is endogenous. So for example, in a recent video, we asked how the demand for cars may have been affected by the price of cars. But we also noted that the price of a car is endogenous because price is determined by both the supply and the demand function. That means that the OLS estimate of the beta 1 coefficient uh, may be biased, meaning that uh, we don't know whether uh, we are estimating the causal impact of car price on car demand uh, or whether we're confounding that with some other factor. Our solution to this problem was to use instrumental variables. So we proposed to use Z as an instrument for X, and we proposed as the instrument uh, to use the price of steel. Uh, the idea here is that the price of steel was both relevant, meaning it is related to the endogenous independent variable car price because it's a part of the production process, uh, but we also argued that it is exogenous, meaning that we don't think it, it is likely to have a direct effect on car demand. We think it only affects car demand through its effect on car price. So once we have selected that instrument and convinced ourselves that it is a valid instrument, uh, we should be able to use the instrumental variables uh, estimator, uh, which is given by this formula. Let's take a moment to see if we can understand the intuition behind uh, this formula. So first notice that the numerator is the covariance of Z and Y, the instrument and the outcome. A covariance tells us something about a relationship between two variables, in this case, steel price and car demand. So think for a moment about why we think steel price might be related to car demand. Uh, well, based on our claim that steel price is an exogenous instrument, we think that steel price probably affects car demand only through its impact on car price. Note that in the denominator, the covariance of Z and X, uh, that is telling us something about the relationship between the instrument steel price and the endogenous independent variable car price. Uh, and we do see a reason why these two uh, would be related because steel is part of the production of a car. Um, so notice that uh, we are essentially dividing uh, this, uh, something that uh, two quantities that tell us something about two different relationships. Uh, let's see if we can get a, a better intuition for this uh, with a graph. Um, so again, when we uh, estimate an OLS model, uh, we are trying to find uh, the, the causal effect of X on Y. In other words, we're trying to find uh, this relationship. Uh, one problem, of course, that we run into is that if X is an endogenous uh, variable, uh, then uh, that means that it's related to the error term. So for example, if something like uh, income, um, uh, income might affect demand for cars, uh, Y, but income may also be related to car price, uh, because uh, when consumers have more income, perhaps they're willing to spend more on a car. Uh, now, uh, we are less certain when we look at the relationship between X and Y. Are we measuring this causal effect that we are interested in? Or are we measuring the relationship of car price to factors like income, which in turn affect uh, demand for cars? This means that the OLS estimate of beta 1 could be biased because the relationship between X and Y might tell us that causal impact of interest, but it may also be confounded with this other pathway through which X could be related to Y. So our solution to this problem was to use an instrumental variable, to use Z as an instrument for X, and uh, I've written the, the two conditions uh, here again that the instrument has to be related to the endogenous independent variable, but it also has to be unrelated with the error term, meaning it has to be exogenous. Uh, let's see if we can uh, go back to our car demand example to understand uh, both why these conditions are relevant, but also why the instrumental variables form formula works the way it does. 
So uh, recall that we uh, said that the instrument could be the price of steel. And for the sake of argument, suppose that the price of steel just increased by $1 per ton. When that happens, suppose we also observe car prices going up by $10 per car. We also observe car demand decrease by five cars uh, at the same time. So it might not be surprising that an increase in steel price leads to an increase in car price because steel is part of the production process of cars. And so uh, since uh, we've made this argument that steel price is exogenous, we might reasonably conclude that the $1 per ton increase in the price of steel has caused that $10 increase in the price of a car. Similarly, since steel price is exogenous, uh, we could also argue that that $1 per ton increase in the price of steel has caused that five car decrease in uh, car demand. Uh, but we might also uh, wonder uh, why would an increase in the price of steel uh, affect the demand for cars in this way? Well, remember that we argued that steel price is exogenous, meaning uh, steel price should not be related to you. Okay? In other words, we don't think that steel price uh, is related to any factor which directly affects demand for cars. Uh, so we seem to have eliminated this, uh, this pathway. However, it does seem quite plausible that the price of steel uh, could affect demand, for, uh, I'm sorry, the price of cars, and that in turn affects the demand for cars. So if it's the case that this increase in the price of steel is affecting demand for cars only through uh, its effect on the price of cars. So now if we wanted to estimate beta one, the impact of the price of a car on the demand for cars, we might reasonably uh, note that uh, these, these two changes, the change in demand and the change in the price of a car were both caused by the same uh, exogenous factor. In other words, we might attribute that five dollar car uh, decrease in demand exclusively to that ten dollar per car increase in price. In other words, we might uh, estimate uh, the beta one as follows. We might divide that five car decrease caused by, uh, we believe, the one dollar per ton increase in the price of steel by the ten dollar per car uh, increase in the price of ca a car uh, that we think was caused by that same event, the $1 uh, per ton increase in the price of steel. Uh, and so this should give us an estimate of beta 1 hat. So in this case, a decrease of 0.5 uh, car for every uh, $1 increase in the price of a car. You might notice that this uh, division that we've done to estimate beta 1 yeah, is actually quite analogous to the IV uh, formula. So you'll notice that this numerator uh, in purple is telling us something about the relationship between Z and Y. So in this case, uh, how did steel price affect car demand? Uh, whereas the denominator is telling us something about the relationship between Z and X, uh, steel price and car price. Uh, and so if you look back at the instrumental var variables formulas, uh, it's very similar uh, with uh, the covariance terms in there. Uh, so uh, in essence, we are using this exogenous event to change in the price of steel to look at how it affected both car price and car demand and uh, using that natural experiment, so to speak, to estimate the effect of car price on car demand. Uh, so next, let's uh, talk about how to estimate an instrumental variables model in practice. Uh, so we'll discuss that in Stata. So of course, to estimate an OLS regression, uh, we will type reg y x, where y is a dependent variable and x is the independent variable. To estimate a model using instrumental variables, uh, we're going to do a few different things. First, we're going to replace the reg command with iv regress 2sls. Uh, that 2sls stands for two-stage least squares. Uh, that's something that will be discussed in a future video. Uh, we still have the, the dependent variable y. Uh, listed first in the list of variables. Then we list the endogenous independent variable x, followed by an equal sign, followed by the instrument z. All of that is in parentheses. 
Uh, once we estimate this model, you should see output, which uh, actually looks quite similar to OLS regression output, and we can interpret the X coefficient as we normally would. Uh, the difference, of course, is that if we have a valid instrument Z, then the estimated X coefficient uh, can now be interpreted causally, uh, meaning that we should have removed uh, any uh, bias that we may have had in OLS, again, as long as that instrument is valid. Uh, so one corollary to this fact is that if we have a valid instrument, and if X, in fact, was endogenous, then we should find that the OLS and IV estimates of the X coefficient should be different. Uh, if we find that they are actually the same, that uh, could mean that uh, X, in fact, was not endogenous uh, despite our suspicions. Uh, finally, let's ask, how do we go about finding a valid instrument? Uh, this is something uh, which, in general, can be quite difficult to do. In some situations, there is not a good instrument. Uh, but let's talk about two situations uh, where we may have uh, some ways of, of thinking about uh, a good instrument and, and possibly identifying uh, one that may be appropriate. Uh, so we have looked at um, many situations where we would like to estimate a model but think it's subject to omitted variable bias. So in this one that I've shown, we'd like to know the impact of years of education on income. Uh, but we've noted uh, before that education uh, may be endogenous. For example, uh, what if it's the case that individuals who are higher ability, perhaps as measured by their test scores, both uh, attain more education and they also earn higher income, but maybe they are earning higher income because of that inherent ability rather than because of the additional uh, education. And so, of course, one thing we propose to do in those cases is to add in uh, those omitted variables. So if we could add in, for example, uh, a variable for test score, perhaps that would help to uh, reduce the bias. So one thing we might ask, um, instead of using test score as a control variable, should we have used it as an instrument? Uh, here's where we want to think about those conditions for a valid instrument. So it certainly uh, does seem plausible that test scores could be related to uh, years of education. So perhaps those who are performing back better academically are going to continue on to more education. Uh, so that means that uh, as an instrument, test scores would certainly be relevant. However, recall that test scores also have to be exogenous, meaning they are not a part of the error term. Uh, and yet we have just uh, argued that test score uh, or other measures of ability are indeed uh, measures uh, or indeed part of the error term uh, because they potentially do have a direct effect on income. Uh, this means that the, uh, the test score uh, would uh, certainly fail that exogeneity condition, and therefore it would not be a good instrument. And for this reason, uh, good control variables are actually poor instruments, uh, simply because good control variables uh, tend to directly affect the outcome, uh, making it endogenous rather than exogenous as we need. Uh, so instead, uh, we have to think of an instrument that does not directly affect the outcome, even though it does affect the endogenous independent variable education. Uh, so in this case, we may ask, uh, is there some uh, perhaps policy, um, a law, something that could have affected an individual's years of education, uh, whereas it uh, does not, we don't have a reason to think that it has a direct impact on the individual's income. So a second scenario that we'll consider is measurement error. So recall that sometimes we want to know uh, the effect of one independent variable on another, but that independent variable X is subject to measurement error. Uh, so it turns out that uh, measurement error can also be thought of in, as an endogeneity problem. It turns out that if we have a second measure a measurement of that independent variable X, that will actually make a good instrument. Uh, so if we have two measures of, uh, uh, of a variable, we would certainly hope that those two measures are correlated with each other. Uh, that would mean that uh, the instrument is relevant. And if the second measurement is also independent of the first measurement, then it's possible to show that, that would make that second measurement exogenous. In other words, 
uh, because that second measurement would satisfy both the relevance and the exogeneity conditions, it would be a valid instrument.